Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Well, here we are. High on some cross bridges above the city because I just had to follow a couple of mobsters. What could go wrong? Completely unrelated to the crossbridge I'm currently teetering on, this sketch is about the crossbridge cycle, which describes how actin and myosin interact within the sarcomeres of muscle cells and cause muscle contraction. All right, the faster we get started, the faster my feet will be back on ground level. So let's go. This thin mobster from the fast actin club represents thin filaments in the sarcomere of a muscle cell. Thin filaments are mostly made of long strands of actin, but they also contain bound troponin and tropomyosin. So this guy, let's call him Slim, is holding a bone-in T-bone steak to represent troponin, and his tropical cup from the mycin club represents tropomyosin. At rest, tropomyosin wraps tightly around actin and covers myosin binding sites. Troponin is bound on top of tropomyosin and makes sure it stays in place. Who throws ice cream? A tragic waste for sure, but that calcium ice cream is our recurring symbol for calcium. And just like how a plop of ice cream in the middle of his steak got Slim all revved up, when calcium ions are released into the cytosol by a muscular action potential, they bind to troponin and the resulting shift in tropomyosin exposes myosin binding sites and starts the cross-bridge cycle. Notice how Slim's reaction to the flying calcium ice cream exposed that target medallion on his chest? That should help you remember that when calcium binds troponin, troponin undergoes a conformational change that moves tropomyosin away from actin's myosin binding sites, making them accessible. Slim certainly looks ready to fight. And he's found a worthy opponent. The thick gangster who just left the mycin club represents the thick filaments in a sarcomere, which are made of myosin protein. As soon as binding sites on the thin filaments are exposed, the heads of myosin proteins latch on and create a cross bridge. Just like how this mycin mobster didn't waste any time reaching in to grab hold of the pendant around Slim's neck as soon as it was exposed. And the reason the mycin mobster has a bot stuck in his chest with 2P batteries and has taken the third battery out to inactivate it? This represents how, at this point in the crossbridge cycle, the thick filament is bound to an ADP and an inorganic phosphate. Apparently, when this guy gets angry, he strips. Along with his shirt, Mr. Mycin tossed the bot and P batteries because once myosin binds actin, Myosin releases its bound ADP and phosphate. Which triggers a power stroke. During the power stroke, myosin pulls on actin, drawing them closer together, just like how the mycin mobster pulls slim and close. As a result, the sarcomere shortens and the muscle starts to contract. Yikes, the bot's back. This active bot with three P batteries has implanted itself in Mr. Mycin, to represent how ATP binds to myosin after a power stroke. And just like the bot's disruptive arrival caused the myosin mobster to toss the fast acting guy aside, the binding of ATP to myosin causes myosin to unbind from actin, breaking the cross bridge. This step can be a bit counterintuitive because ATP often triggers cellular action, but in this case, it actually ends a reaction. Fun fact? Lack of ATP is also the reason behind rigor mortis. No more ATP after death means no more cross-bridge uncoupling, which means sarcomeres stay contracted. Well, he didn't waste any time disabling that bot. By removing a P battery, Mr. Mycin deactivated the bot. Notice it's no longer glowing. And now he's ready to throw another punch. This should help you remember that after ATP binds myosin to break the cross-bridge, ATP undergoes dephosphorylation to create ADP and phosphate. This causes the myosin head to return to a cocked, high-energy state. Good thing, too, because Slim's got backup. This steady stream of fast actin friends represents how, as long as calcium remains bound to troponin, myosin will keep grabbing the next binding site on the thin filament, forming new cross bridges, 
and continuing the cycle. As actin is drawn past the myosin segment by segment, the sarcomere shortens and the muscle contracts. I certainly don't want to be next in line, so let's step back and recap. The cross-bridge cycle begins when calcium binds to troponin on actin, moving tropomyosin out of the way and exposing myosin binding sites. A myosin head, which at this point holds a bound ADP and phosphate, attaches to one of these sites and creates a cross-bridge. The release of ADP and phosphate causes a power stroke, which pulls the thin filament towards the thick filament. Binding of ATP to myosin breaks the cross-bridge, and dephosphorylation of that ATP recocks the myosin head so it can bind to the next section of actin so the process can continue. Okay, I don't want to be on the receiving end of a power stroke, so I think I'll try to sneak down. Wish me luck. <laughs>